Hello, I'm Michael Malinoff, and welcome to this month's edition of the County Administrator's Monthly Report. This month, we're going to do things a little bit different, and our special guest is Commissioner President Peter Murphy. Welcome. Thank you. What we're going to talk about on this edition is the Maryland General Assembly for 2018 and the county's role in making sure that our residents are represented and the legislation that the commissioners choose to introduce is followed through. The unique advantage we have is Commissioner Murphy has been in the House of Delegates for two terms and is really a, an expert on the process. Commissioner Murphy. Oh, thanks, Mike. Thanks. I'm not so sure I'm an expert. And some people would not think that was an advantage to have, but I think it's helped a bit in terms of the way we, we uh, uh, forward legislation to our delegation is having had that experience. Because once you kind of understand what the process is, it's a little bit easier to shape it here locally so that it makes that process run more smoothly. And it supports our delegation as well as they kind of shepherd the uh, legislation through the General Assembly. Now, the county has a representation and a lobbying firm. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I think that um, uh, it's been very helpful to us and to the delegation to have a firm. They're located in Annapolis, and they do an amazing job of tracking our legislation, working with us on that legislation. They help us get testimony. They make sure that we're always represented at every hearing. And then they keep our staff. Of course, we have our own staff through our Office of Law that manages our, our legislation as well. So having that connection in Annapolis really does give us representation we need to get our legislation through. Uh, they present a report on a weekly basis and then uh, the county attorney will then go over that report and additional information at the uh, the commissioner's meetings. Yeah, right, and you make a good point. It's a because of the process that we've set up, you're right, our county attorney really does have an opportunity to keep all the commissioners informed as well as the public of the status of each one of these pieces of legislation. And uh, and and I don't think we could do better with the firm that you all brought on board that we work with. Um, they're incredibly talented. They all have great experience with the legislators up there and they've done um, they're really very much responsible for getting our legislation through, so we're very grateful to have them. Having worked in Annapolis, I was a, uh, worked for the city of Annapolis for many years, and then my first job was actually working for the state senate. So I had a, a pretty good, uh, pretty good background in how the process works. But can you describe a little bit about how the county commissioners decide on legislation and how that's introduced? Sure, and I, and I appreciate the opportunity because we've changed things a bit. First of all, it's broken out into a couple different categories, and the simplest one to talk about is our bond bills. It used to be the county would hear these bond requests, they would forward those on to the delegation, but and then the delegation would make certain decisions about that. We came to realize that we really don't have much um, authority over those bond bills. First of all, it is state money, it's not county money. Secondly, the delegation has to decide whether it gets put in on the House side or the Senate side. And thirdly, they have to decide, probably more so, or uh, as important, is to decide which ones of those bonds are gonna put in and how they're gonna split the money. So what we did is one of the things we changed is that we don't hear the bond bills anymore. They don't come to the county, they go directly to the delegation and that is a much more streamlined process than the one that had been in existence. So that was one of the things we changed. The other thing we did this year which I think has been very helpful as far as getting our legislation moving is that the county only took in legislation requests from our agencies. And there are a couple, a couple that I'd be happy to talk about in a minute, but they would come from our agencies. We would discuss those, get information, and ask the kinds of questions we needed to ask to get more clarity. And then just recently, we voted on two pieces that we said that we would send to the delegation for their consideration. I want to make it really clear that's not a vote in favor of those because we haven't seen the bill. It's not right. until you get to see the bill because, as they say, the devil's in the details. The other piece to that, and that is, is equally important, is our, is our residents and how do they get their voice heard in Annapolis around pieces of legislation. So we held a joint meeting with the delegation and then those residents came and presented their requests and those will go and did go directly to the delegation. So the delegation will make decisions around which ones of those pieces of legislation 
they want to um, support. And then once they make a decision as to that legislation, they will then send it back to us, and we'll, if it obviously will affect Charles County, and what the impact will have, and then we'll make some decisions and perhaps suggest some amendments. So it really cleans up the process a bit, and it's much less confusing for our residents. Can you touch on a couple of pieces of legislation that was discussed before the commissioners? Sure. There were three that we actually sent up. One of them was pretty straightforward. Every four years, there's a commission that's formed. It's called the Compensation Committee uh, Commission. And they're, for, they're responsible for making recommendations on things like the orphans court salaries, county commissioner salaries, and so forth. The one that we did send up was to support their recommendation to increase the salary of our orphans court judges. So that was one piece that went up. The other two, um, one came from our sheriff's department asking for the authority to, um, to impose reasonable costs on our work release uh, program and those inmates that go out and work to cover certain expenses. Um, we support that in kind of in concept, but there are a lot of details that need to be worked out on that piece of legislation before we'll take a vote on that. But that is in Annapolis right now. You mentioned our lobbying firm. They're working closely with the delegation to get those kind of details, such as how much, you know, uh, what's that money to be used for, and so forth. And then the second piece of legislation that we sent for consideration was proposed by our Department of Health. As it is right now, the, uh, there's a cigarette licensing fee, and that's $25 a year. That $25 goes to the comptroller. The uh, health officer requested that that be raised from $25 to $125, and asked that that $100 then would go to stay locally for enforcement and some education. We haven't seen the, de we, we, as I mentioned, we forwarded that for consideration, but we haven't worked out the details on that in terms of who collects that money, how much of that stays here, how much of it may end up going back to the state, what would that education look like, what's the enforcement and so forth. So, so that was it, that we had uh, just those three pieces that we've so far had to deal with. That, excuse me, that doesn't, tell us anything about what the delegation is working on. I haven't seen any of those pieces yet. Well, both of us uh, attend meetings with the Maryland Association of Counties, MACO, mm -hmm. and uh, you're the county's uh, representative for the legislative committee, and you're on the education committee, and I'm on the tax committee. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about that process and how that works? Sure, and, uh, and I think it's really important that you note that because those are two really very important committees. And it's, and it's really a privilege, and I think it benefits the county a lot that, that we are on those two committees. The education one, of course, deals with, with all uh, topics related to education. Um, I'm delighted to be on there because I sat on the Ways and Means Committee when I was in Annapolis and we dealt with education issues. So it's nice to have some of that background. And then, um, and then certainly on the Tax Committee, it's incredibly important to us to have you there because you're so involved in our local budget and you understand that probably better than anybody does in county government. So to have that kind of representation, representation up there is, um, is very important. And our role is to watch the bills that are coming through the legislature and to see whether or not those, or to see what impact those will have on, on local government. And that's the whole purpose of the Maryland Association of Counties, is to protect local governments. Right, From we, our friends in Annapolis, right? right. <laughs> well, I was on that side at one point. You were the ones I, I, I get it. That we had to keep <laughs> right, an eye on right, it. One that's point amazing. Point you have now. a very different perspective when you see it from, the, from this lens. Yeah. Well, going to MACO has been interesting for me because my career had been in the municipal side, Maryland Municipal League. And as you know, the first couple of meetings I went to, it was a, a little bit of a cultural adjustment, uh, different issues, different approach. Um, the, the MACO's made up of small rural counties and big urban counties. And there's a little bit of that dichotomy there, and I find that dynamic to be the kind of interesting uh, process of bill making. Uh, Charles County's unique in that regard. It's a growing county within uh, the Washington Suburban Statistical Area or Metropolitan Area, but yet it has a very rural heritage. And so our, our role is sort of in the middle as, uh, as the bills come through. And, and um, the role 
for our viewers uh, is that we will actually vote in the majority rules on various pieces of legislation. Mm -hmm. So I found that to be very interesting. Yeah, and, and, you, and you make another good point, and that is that even though we're working through MAKO and they can go in as an organization, oftentimes people will, many times delegates and centers will ask, what is the stand, what, what is MAKO stand on a particular piece of legislation? That does carry quite a bit of weight up there. But because we are unique, you know, in a really good way, that we have to take another look at that too. So we may not always be able to support some of MAKO, but we still have uh, access to our delegation and to the committees up there as well. So we're always looking out, obviously, for the best interest of Charles County and where MAKO supports us and our unique position. That's you know, that's uh, that's a benefit to us. But on the other hand, we still. I don't want people to think that that's our only avenue right. to getting, you know, getting good legislation for Charles County. Well, I think the, the interesting aspect of an election year general assembly is whether or not there's going to be much activity. Mm -hmm. uh, the two items that I understood from the MAKO initial meeting was, had to do with the discussion on education and the Kerwin Commission and the funding of school construction. And it sounds like that issue is going to be deferred until next year. Mm -hmm. But the one issue that is outstanding, um, and is they were unable to really describe what the General Assembly was going to do, was trying to keep Maryland taxpayers whole from the recent federal tax uh, proposal that was passed by the uh, Congress and signed by the President. Unfortunately, many in, in Maryland think it's going to hurt our taxpayers because of our tax structure. And I know prior to the end of this calendar year, some of our taxpayers had reached out to commissioners to see if they could pay their taxes early. Because there's a cap now, I think $10,000 on what you can actually uh, deduct. Mm -hmm. So that is going to be, in my mind, the most interesting aspect of the General Assembly is to see how Maryland taxpayers will fare in, in, uh, in not being uh, unduly burdened by the new tax proposal. And that's why you're on the tax subcommittee. Thank so, you. <laughs> so you can watch that for us. But I think you're absolutely right. And um, uh, that that's going to be a major issue during this session. Um, I think there's going to be, as there is in election years, lots of activity. I don't know how productive all of that's going to be, but that's why we're there. We're going to make sure that what works really benefits us. And we'll continue to do what we can to kind of keep those lines of communication open and to work with our delegates and, and, and the committees up there because, you know, you certainly in, in Annapolis, you really do need a bipartisan approach to a lot of these things and, and, and we true. recognize that and that's what, it's our intention is to work in that, kind of within that uh, uh, arena. So um, it will be interesting. It's going to be very interesting to see what kinds of things do come out of Annapolis this year. Well, very good. Well, I appreciate your time on the County Administrator's Monthly Report. Thanks for the opportunity to be able to talk about this because I think it's a part of county government that a lot of folks don't understand, um, but that we are very connected to the state and we need to be. So I appreciate the opportunity. And again, I uh, would really encourage all of our residents to, to watch our sessions, our open sessions, because we'll, they'll be getting regular updates from our county attorney as to the status of, of the legislation that we put forward as well as other legislation that would either come from our delegation or would be of interest at the state. And I think between you and me, we can also bring some stuff that may not be through our delegation but may be MAKO issues right. that we would want the, the rest of the Board of County Commissioners as well as our, our residents to know about. So I would really encourage uh, our residents to stay engaged. Good. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you for watching this month's edition of the County Administrator's Report. See you next month.